All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Good morning, everybody. My name is Drew Embry, and welcome to our Knowledge Education Series event, How to Spot and Avoid a Malicious Email. We found that there's a lot happening in the technology industry, and it can be overwhelming to business people. We hope these sessions can bring some clarity to some of the different technology buzzwords that are being used in the industry today. The topic we're covering today is how to spot and avoid malicious email. My name is Drew Embry, and I'm a partner here at P&L Technology. My role is to set the technical direction for our company and clients and help you get the most out of your technology investment. I'm really excited for this topic today. We have very strong attendance, and I think that really speaks to the popularity and relevance of this topic. I also understand that we have a number of clients that have this webinar up on a large screen in their conference rooms with a majority of their staff in attendance. So I congratulate those companies on taking the very important step of educating their employees on this topic. So here's how this uh, overview is going to work. This is a listen-only event, and it will be recorded. We know everybody is busy and will commit to a 30-minute maximum time for this event. If you have any questions, please use the chat function to send them in, and we will save plenty of time at the end to address as many questions as we can. Following the session, we will introduce some future topics that we hope you will be interested in learning more about. You will be receiving an email as well that will contain a short survey that we hope you will take the time to fill out as it will assist us in making these future sessions more informative. This webinar was created for a broad audience with both no novice and intermediate users of computers in mind. We'll hope this, we hope you will find this session valuable and helpful to your business. So let's take a look at the problem that we're talking about today. What we're seeing is cybercrime is increasing at an alarming rate. And large businesses have really been under assault for quite some time, and they uh, have reacted by spending billions of dollars to keep them secure, you know, sometimes with limited success. I think we've all seen in the news how you know, even a company as big as Target uh, was able to lose 100 million credit cards of their customers and really caused them millions of dollars in damage and lost goodwill with their clients. So what's happened is now is a lot of the bad guys have shifted down to attacking more of the small to mid-sized businesses that most of you on the, on the call are a part of, and, and you're now more vulnerable uh, because that's where the bad guys are now focusing. Security concerns by business have also moved from nuisance to to profit moded, you know, profit moded uh, militia. Formerly, it was kind of the kid in his mom's basement who was just trying to, uh, to to do something cool, but it's really since then shifted to organized crime that a lot of time is outside of the reach of U.S. law enforcement. A lot of it coming from Eastern Europe or Asia. Your users are already under assault from malicious email. When we talk about malicious email, what we're talking about is email that if it tricks you into installing or opening the, the payload in the malicious email, uh, things like viruses or malware or spyware or even a, a category called ransomware, which we'll talk about later, will be installed on your PC and attempt to steal information, take over your PC, or cause other, other unwanted and unauthorized activity. But what we're seeing a lot in the industry is businesses spend a lot of money on technology but very few are addressing the human element. And it's the human element that we're going to focus on today. So let's, uh, without further delay, let's get right into it. Uh, we're now going to show you some actual examples of a malicious email and, uh, and that people fall prey to every day. And we're going to try to give you the tools and confidence to easily spot and deflect these malicious emails. So we're going to turn you into experts at spotting these emails today. And uh, really, these skills, after you have them, really won't take any additional time uh, in your day-to-day -day life. So let's look at the first example that we want to, to look at today. Um, this is what we call an older style malicious email. And it kind of appears to be one of those online greeting cards that you know, a friend or family member may send you. And we all like those, so maybe we would click on it without uh, really taking a close look and then have all the problems introduced by the malware introduced to our computers. So if we take a look at this email fairly quickly, um, you know, we can fairly easily spot some problems with that. We've highlighted some of those in red here today. 
So the first thing that we're going to notice is the from address that's under the from there and the to um, are the same. So obviously we know we didn't send ourselves a greeting card, you know, unless we're an exceptionally lonely person. So that's an instant red flag. Um, the spammers do that to try to get through spam filters a little bit easier, uh, but, uh, but it, uh, it's not enough to fool us now that we know what to look for. Another thing that we'll notice is it's really not personalized by name. You know, if somebody is going to send you a greeting card, the, the online greeting card software is going to ask for the first name so it can be personalized. But you know, in this case, the spammers really don't know what our name is, so they're not able to, to list that in there. Another thing we want to, uh, to look at is, is just the layout and the professionalism of the email. You know, we can kind of see there's some kind of strange English and it's not a real professional layout and it's, you know, it just doesn't look like a, a legitimate email or a, something that would come from a professional company that would send uh, online greeting cards. And then finally, there's a link to click on. And when the, if a user were to be fooled and click on that link, the malware would then be downloaded and installed to their computer and then all the trouble that we're trying to avoid starts. So anytime you see a link in an email, that should always cause you to think twice and take a step back and, and just assess the solution like we've just done here. So when we take all these things into consideration, you know, the, the, the to and the from being the same, the, the strange English, the non-personalization and the link, um, you know, we're just going to uh, delete this email and, and make sure it doesn't cause us any issues. Let's take a look at another example now. And this is what we call the fake Facebook email. So Facebook is very, very common. You know, they have over a billion users worldwide. So everybody from my daughter to my grandmother uses Facebook. And so of course the bad guys are going to use that to their advantage to try to fool you in, into installing their malware. So let's take a look at this example. And again, uh, we can immediately start to see some problems. Uh, the first thing is, is the email is claiming to need to reset your password for kind of a vague safety reason. You know, there's really no explanation on what's going on. Um, another thing to keep in mind is really no organizations, no legitimate organizations handle, handle password resets that way, this way. And a, a new thing that we're just introducing now is a zip file is used to better try to hide the malware. So usually the zip file, if you open it, it it, con it contains what's called an executable. And we'll talk about more on that in just a little, uh, in a moment here. And again, we kind of see some non-professional writing. You know, they address us as, hey. Uh, you know, that's probably not something a, a big company like Facebook is going to address their users in a, in a casual fashion like that. You know, we don't see a company logo. We see kind of a poor layout. Uh, it's not, uh, not looking real legitimate at this point. Another rule of thumb to completely note is, Never ever open a zip file unless it's from somebody you know and are expecting. Uh, we're going to see some more examples of this in a minute, but zip files are a very common way that, uh, that executables are used. Uh, another thing we do want to point out on the Facebook is because Facebook is public and you know, you're able to go in there and make, make friends on that, um, your list of friends, depending on your security settings, can be accessible to the bad guys. So, what they're doing in some cases is using that to their advantage where they'll send you a message that appears to be from a friend that you have on Facebook. Um, so they use that to further trick you into opening messages, you know, since it does use your friend's name. So even though it may say that uh, your friend sent you a message on Facebook, you still want to use some of the tips and tricks we're showing you today to, to really scrutinize that email before you open it. You know, so again, we've seen the zip file. We've already talked about really uh, being cautious about that. We see the non-professional writing in the layout. Um, you know, we know that Facebook doesn't handle their, their password uh, resets in this way. We're just going to delete this email and, and move on uh, and not, uh, not fall victim to this. So we talked a little bit about the zip file. We did want to show you what it looks like. Um, malware writers, let me advance the slide here. Uh, malware writers started using zip files because executable files, that's an executable file is the, is the, the file type that can actually be run on your computer that um, they use to deliver the malware or the virus, are typically blocked by email filters. But zip files aren't. So what a zip file is, is it's just a file that can contain other files. So you could put a Word documents, PDFs, Excel files, or a combination of those things in a zip file. It compresses it down and makes it easy to email or transfer. 
When the zip file is opened, then you can see the files that are inside that zip file. So here's an example. Um, this one was uh, uh, hidden to look like a billing summary from Con Edison. That's a power company um, you know, out on the East Coast. And uh, when we open the zip file, here we see that executable. Uh, the reason we know it's an executable is it has this .exe extension. And it doesn't have um, an icon like a Word or Excel, you know, the Word icon or the Excel or the PDF icon. So this is supposed to be a billing summary, but you know, obviously even if it was a billing sum summary, it would probably be a, a PDF or a Word file, you know, certainly not an executable file. So although we've just taught you not to open the zip files, if for whatever reason you happen to open it and you see that exe file in there, um, that's just another huge red flag. Absolutely do not click on that. Uh, just delete it and, uh, and save yourself a ton of headaches. So let's move on to some more examples. Uh, another example that we're finding to be very, very, very common is the fake uh, UPS or FedEx shipping email. Uh, these, are, uh, these were really rampant starting about a year ago, and they're frequently used to fool people into opening up, uh, again, the malicious content. We especially see people fall prey to this around the holidays as you know, gift packages are, are being delivered by these carriers. And you know, a lot of times they'll claim that a parcel will be sent back if you don't act. And you know, of course, this gets your attention as you, know, you don't want a loved one to be without a gift on Christmas morning. But you know, again, let's take a little bit of time and scrutinize this email. The first thing we'll notice is the from line is weird. Um, and and that, this is due to just careless programming by the, by the malware writer. You know, we see the little backslash in the quotes around FedEx Express there. Um, you know, that kind of gives us a clue that something's not right right off the bat. The other thing we'll notice is if we look on the subject line, it says your package is available for pickup number 8248. You know, if we think about it a little bit, that's obviously not a real FedEx tracking number. If you've ever worked with FedEx, you know, those are quite long numbers, and you know, the format's uh, much shorter than that. You know, they deliver 8,200 packages an hour, and obviously that's not a, not a legitimate uh, pickup number. It's way too short. Another thing we'll notice if you're starting to uh, see the patterns here is again we see that zip file used. Uh, that malware is hiding inside that zip file there that says FedEx invoice.zip. We see the little, the little zip icon that also tells us it's a zip file. And then we're going to move on to the body. Uh, again we see the English is weird and you know if you've ever worked with FedEx before you, you know what a typical FedEx email looks like and this, this certainly isn't it. You know it's got their logo and it's got you know, call, um, phone numbers to call, and uh, they certainly would never have a zip file. So, you know, we're, we're starting to get good at this now. Uh, we're not going to be fooled by this. We're just going to delete it and, and get on our way. Okay, so let's m move on here to another one. Um, these are other really common ones we see in our industry, and that's the threat of a lawsuit, um, maybe an IRS action, or a Better Business Bureau action. Uh, you know, we'll get a fake email that says uh, there's a lawsuit pending, or the Better Business uh, a customer's filed a negative Better Business Bureau action with us, and you know those prey on your fear as a business person. You know, nobody wants to deal with a lawsuit or a poor Better Business Bureau rating, and of course, everybody fears the big bad IRS. So, uh, you know, rather than have an emotional reaction, let's just take a step back here. Um, and let's look at the problems here. So the first is uh, the subject. We're going to sue you. You know, I don't know of too many attorneys that communicate this way. They're a little more professional, so that's certainly right off the bat a, uh, a big red flag. Um, you know, another thing to keep in mind is the IRS, the BBB, and the attorneys um, really n almost never use email to deliver this kind of news. You know, it always comes via a mail or, you know, in some cases, a certified letter. You know, again, we're examining the, the messages and uh, that we see non-professional writing or weird English. You know, like we talked about earlier, a lot of these come from Eastern Europe or Asia, where uh, the writers aren't, aren't English as a first language uh, people, so the, the the grammar and things just don't look right. And then yet again, we see that zip file there uh, with the attached document. Um, you know, so this this person is hoping the the bad uh, the recipient will be concerned about a pending lawsuit, open that zip file, and then. Uh, be infected and have all kinds of trouble. So, you know, again, we're just going to delete this email and not uh, not be uh, not be a victim. Let's take a look at another really common one. We're kind of trying to hit all of the major categories that we're seeing out there today, and this is um, a, you know a, a banking or a credit card notice. You know, very very common. 
so let's, let's look at this email. So here we see a couple more tricks being, uh, being uh, shown here. So the email to line now is actually customized a little bit to the user. So now obviously they don't know my first name, so if they sent this to me, you know, my name is Andrew Embry or Drew Embry. My email address is aembry at pltechnology.com. So they've customized this not with my first name, but with the first part of my email address. So um, it is blurred out here, but uh, you know, that would be uh, aembry uh, in, in the document name here that they've attached. So they've gotten a little bit tricky, but you know, still not quite en enough to fool us. Another question to ask yourself if you get one of these uh, type of emails is, you know, this one's uh, purported to come from Wells Fargo. We can see Wells Fargo there on the front line, and then we can see Wells Fargo uh, um, there in the, in the signature of the body. And, uh, you know, do you bank with Wells Fargo? Uh, we've had people fooled by these before that uh, don't even really have a relationship with them. And, you know, then they kind of feel silly when you ask them, well, do you bank with Wells Fargo? And they say, well, no. And, well, why did you open it? And they, sometimes they can't explain it, but uh, but that's why we're why we're here today. And um, you know, this email is written a little bit more professionally. They've kind of got a disclaimer there on the bottom, uh, like you might see from a bank. So uh, the writing on this one isn't necessarily an, an instant giveaway like some of the previous examples. But uh, you know, even though they've customized it a little bit, uh, we still see that zip file there. And uh, and again, due to our previous training, we're going to really heavily scrutinize any time we get a zip file uh, that will deliver uh, the malware if we click on it. So again, a huge red flag. Another good um, rule of thumb is if you get an email that, uh, from a bank or a credit card that you're not sure of, you know, if in doubt, pick up the phone and call them. Or um, open your web browser and type in the link manually. So, if you get an email from Citibank that says, hey, here's your statement, you, know, you can click on the link in the email to go to get your statement if you're sure it's legitimate. But even better is just open the browser and type you know, citibank.com into your browser and then log in manually from there. That way you're sure that you know, you're not being taken to a, a site that's, uh, that looks like Citibank's but actually isn't. Another very important thing when you uh, get these fake ones um, from from a bank is, you know, you may be in doubt and you may decide to call them and you'll call the number there uh, listed on the email. You know, so this email, you're in question on whether that's a legitimate email. Don't call the number on the email either. Uh, what the bad guys are doing is just setting up uh, numbers and the, the phone will go ring right to the bad guys and they'll say, Citibank, may I help you? And ask for your account number and your passwords and those types of things and, and get it from you that way. So if you need to call, you know, go to the web and, and look up the number manually or you know, look on the back of your credit card or your bank statement or anything like that to find the number to call in to, to, to see if that was a legitimate email that required any of your actions. So let's show another little twist that we've seen too. Um, this is, it looks very, very similar to the last one. And it uses a little, a little twist. So again, we see the zip attachment has been named to match the recipient's username. So a little bit of trick they're trying to do to, to trick us into thinking it's legitimate. And what they've done here is they've encrypted the zip file. And why do they do that? Well, companies like us have kind of gotten smarter over the years, and we've started scanning inside zip files to try to look for executables, look for malware, you know, virus scan those. And if that zip is encrypted, then we can't look in there. So what they've done is they put the decryption key right in the email message there. So there you see the decryption key. And what the user can do then is uh, type in the decryption key, open the zip file, and get themselves infected. So you know, obviously that a true encrypted email isn't going to come in like this with the decryption key right in the body of the message because that would defeat the purpose of sending an encrypted email that nobody else could open. So kind of what my point is of putting this slide in is you know, don't underestimate the lengths that some of your coworkers will go through to try to get themselves infected. Um, People can, uh, people can fall prey to things and you know, kind of feel pretty stupid afterwards after you explain it to them. But uh, you know, again, that's why we're here to, to, uh, to address that. So you know, again, um, you know, we do see some problems with this email. We see no personalization. It says just Dear Business Associate. You know, somebody's sending you something that's so secure that it needs to be an encrypted email, they're probably going to put your first name on it and, and other details there. So again, we're going to delete this and, and uh, not uh, not cause a problem. 
One of the things that we thought we'd show you too is, is why this is so critical. Um, we're going to show you actually an actual infection that uh, if you uh, hadn't uh, heeded the advice that we've talked about uh, in this webinar so far and you had clicked on one of those, uh, we're going to show you that now that, um, something that has to happen to employees that fall for those schemes. So this was a very painful example that hit many local businesses, even in Nebraska. You know, I know of personally at least five uh, businesses here in o uh, Omaha and two in Lincoln that were infected by this uh, beca because one of their employees uh, was, was a bit careless. Uh, I gave this presentation to a, a, a group uh, last month, and five people in the audience of 100 had, had experienced this virus, which I thought just for one virus was a very, uh, very high number. So how it works is an email comes in that could be like any of the examples we've shown. If the user clicks on the executable and installs the malware, uh, they're going to see this message. At this point, they're having a very, very, very bad day. What this particular virus does, it was called CryptoLocker, is it would go out and encrypt any files it found on your PC, or if your PC was connected to a file server, like many businesses are, almost all businesses are, it would go out to that file server and encrypt all the files on there. So the Word files, the Excel files, the PDF, email, it would encrypt those with a key that only the bad guys had, and only the bad guys could give you the decryption key to, uh, to, to restore your files. So if you read the message there, it says um, you know, the files were encrypted and they're demanding $100 to get your files back. Uh, and they, not only that, they put a time limit on there that if you didn't respond and pay the ransom, that was ransomware that we talked about earlier, then uh, they would delete the key and you would not be able to get your files back. So as an IT provider, if we had a, a client fall prey to this, um, we don't pay the ransom. What we do is we remove the virus and then we restore the files from backup. Uh, that process could take 24 to 48 hours though, uh, which in case the business would not have any access to those files. So when we talked earlier about the, um, the virus riders moving from you know, the proverbial kid in his mom's basement to the organized crime, uh, this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Uh, they're not annoying viruses anymore. They are work stoppage malware uh, with a profit motive attached to them. Uh, another uh, thing uh, that kind of shows you the professionalism that, and uh, skill that these guys have is after you get the files, you kind of click next and uh, you can pay with a credit card or a, or a Bitcoin right in, your, uh, right in the app here. So um, they've even made it easy to, to pay with a credit card and, <laughs> and, uh, and profit from uh, from this. So we wanted to show you kind of what can happen and uh, why it's important to be so, uh, uh, be so vil uh, vigilant around this. So let's move kind of into takeaways. We've shown a lot of examples today. Um, just some basic takeaways is do you know the sender of the email? You know, do you do business with them in the, in the case of a bank or a credit card or, or those types of organizations? You know, are you expecting an email from that person or company? Take a look at the email. Does it look right? You know, how is the English? Is it professional? Is there a link in the email? You know, if so, rather than clicking on that link, maybe just open a browser and type the URL in directly of the, of the place you know you want to go. Um, that step is especially recommended for banks, UPS, FedEx, those types of things. Be extra, extra wary of zip files unless you know the sender. Uh, and never, never, never open a file with an EXE extension inside of an email. If in doubt, uh, you know, the, these methods will continue to evolve over time as, as people get smarter. Uh, just call us to check it out for you. We'd be happy to take a look. Um, as IT people, we can you know, look at it for 10 or 15 seconds and, and, and know if it's legitimate or not. And we have some, some more advanced uh, things we can do too to check to see if it's, uh, it's going to cause you problems or not. So again, you know, if you're in doubt, give us a call. Save, save yourself hours of potential downtime. Kind of the last takeaway I would challenge everybody to is really share what you've learned with your coworkers today. Uh, so if you, know, if you manage other people, have your staff watch this webinar. We're going to be sending a recording out. It will be on our website. Um, you know, maybe make it um, part of your onboarding process. If you hire a new employee that they have to watch the webinar or, or sign a document with some of the details on here. Um, it's one of those cases where just an ounce of prevention is you know, worth <laughs> a day of business downtime, and it's well worth a, a brief investment to, uh, to avoid that. So we're approaching uh, 30 minutes here, and I promise to leave time for questions. 
So I did want to, uh, to move into the questions, and it looks like we have had a number of questions answered. Um, if you do have an additional question, please chat it in now. Um, so we do have some questions here. The first question is, is, is we have antivirus on our company servers and PCs. Uh, what level of protection will this give me from some of the things you've outlined today? Won't it protect me from some of the things you talked about? And the answer is yes and no. Um, antivirus software is, is a great thing to have. You absolutely need it. But it does not provide 100% uh, protection. And I kind of use, uh, use a comparison of the flu virus out there, the flu vaccine. It protects you against some kinds of flu, but uh, you know the, the virus mutates and, and uh, and if, even if you have the flu shot, it's very possible that you could still get the flu. There are um, very talented people out there that are writing millions of new viruses every year, and it's a game of cat or mouse between the virus um, antivirus makers, the companies that make antivirus protection products, and the bad guys. And, and frankly, the bad guys are always a step ahead and, and, are, and are winning the battle at this point. So although it can protect you against some, uh, we've really got to focus on the human element like we've done today to to give a uh, full full protection. Uh, another one that got the chatted in is these were great examples. Um, can you give me a couple more that you've seen lately? Um, sure, I can do that. A few others that we've seen, you know, we talked a little bit about the UPS and the FedEx. Another one that we see a lot is you've received an e-fax or you've received an electronic fax. So one of the first things I I tell people again is just scrutinize a little bit is you know do you or your company have an online fax service do you have an online fax if if you don't um, you know it's highly highly likely that that's not a legitimate email uh, if you do have an, an, an e fax capability or a you know a fax server in your company where it would email you faxes get to know what those look like and if if get to know what the emails look like and if one comes in it doesn't look like look like it should just delete it just to get rid of it uh, another one we saw is, is a voicemail to email gateways. So a lot of companies have the technology in place where somebody leaves you a voicemail, it'll email it to you in your email so you can listen to it on your computer or get it on your, your smartphone when you're out of the office. And kind of the same thing as the fax. You know, does your company have that function? If the company hasn't installed it and you get an email saying you've got a voicemail, you know, that's, that's just not possible. So uh, delete it, delete it. And uh, again, if you have a, f a system, uh, get to know what a legitimate one looks like so you know, uh, you know what's going on. And then beyond that, most of the, those can be spotted using the exact same techniques we showed already today. And let's see, a final question we've got here is, um, you know, are there any other steps we should be taking outside of the education of our staff? And kind of goes to the last or the first question we had. Um, you definitely need a, a well-managed antivirus solution that's you know, not just installed, but make sure it's up to date and the, the, what's called the virus definitions. Those are the, the identified malware that the companies identify that your software is aware of the latest ones. Um, there are some other things that we, we can't really cover today, but there's some what we call a next generation firewall. Uh, so that's a firewall that's kind of aware of what malware is and can be another way to, to scan for that technology. Um, web filtering devices so uh, we can block certain known malware sites uh, fr from even having a connection into your, to your business. Those, those can all help. And if you're interested in learning about, more about those, we'd be happy to, uh, to explain what those are. Um, another question that just came in was, if laptops, smartphones, and tablets are linked together, will malware infect all devices? And the answer is kind of it depends. It, it depends on a couple things. It depends on how smart the malware is uh, and if it's designed to jump systems or not. And it, then it depends on the make and model of those devices. So if you have a Windows PC and you download a Windows piece of malware, and you've got you know, Android or Apple phones or Apple tablets, it's highly unlikely that the malware is going to jump from device to device in that, in that fashion. So although we still want to be just as vigilant as we have now, um, you know, it's, it's probably not likely to jump to smartphones and tablets at this time, although technically it is possible and, and, and could happen in the future. Uh, we had a number of people just ask when the, the data will be available. Uh, we will be sending out tomorrow. Um, and then it will be on our website uh, as well at the same time. So uh, that will be watchable via our, our YouTube channel, which is linked from our website. 
I think we've covered all the questions. Um, just wanted to let you know of an of a, of a upcoming event we have. Our next Knowledge event is not a webinar, but rather a hands-on workshop on Microsoft Office 365. So that workshop is designed for owners or managers that want to get a hands-on demo of Office 365 to determine if, if it would fit in their business. So Office 365 is a next generation uh, email, collaboration, and instant communication tools that kind of replaces Microsoft Exchange servers or Microsoft hosted email. And these sessions are designed for, for um, any of our clients or prospects that don't currently have Microsoft Office 365. We are holding sessions in both Lincoln and Omaha uh, at the dates listed there again. So if you're interested, just visit our events page at pltechnology.com forward slash events. And there's a link there where you can email and register for one of those events. Uh, we are limited to 10 people for those. So if you're interested in, in attending, uh, get registered. So make sure we've got a slot for you. So again, thanks a lot for your time today. Uh, please enjoy your rest of your day. If there's any other questions that, that come up, uh, please don't hesitate to email me at uh, my email ad address listed there on the, uh, on the screen. Thanks again for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your day.